37. Morality and Life Dr. Basil Janowski in The Dark Fields of Venus cites a complaint filed against him with respect to his work as a physician in New York City, VD Clinic. After examining a girl of 17, he had told her to return in two weeks for the final results and then added, and meanwhile behave. This, he was told, was, quote, a grave error, end quote. It was an intrusion on the privacy of the patient and a confusion of morals and medicine. This, reflected Dr. Yanovsky, is a symbol of our times. New Yorkers and others accept crime as a fact of life and corruption as routine in business and politics, but they will not tolerate having an immoral girl being told to behave. Apparently, people have a civil right to be immoral and no doctor has a right even to suggest another way of life to them. No wonder we're in trouble. We make criminals into champions of civil rights and kidnappers into revolutionary heroes who are publicised and acceded to. But to tell an immoral girl to behave is grounds for a rebuke to a doctor. Morality cannot be separated from life. Our Lord said of the moral law, This do, and thou shalt live. Luke ten twenty eight, And he alone provides the power to do it as God intends it. To separate morality from life is to turn life into death. The word is the very beginning concerning disobedience is that it leads to death. Genesis 2.17 The decay in men and nations today is occasioned by their moral decay and the root of this is their apostasy from God. We cannot escape the consequences of morality by abolishing moral judgment and moral counsel. No good service was rendered the 17-year-old girl by refraining from hurting her feelings further by any moral word. We've removed the Bible and its faith and morals from our schools, our courts, our medical clinics, and from too many churches, and then we act indignant when we encounter corruption and hypocrisy in high places and low. We have asked for it, paid for it, and required it by our exclusion of God and his law word from our lives, and our indignation has a dishonest ring. Under similar circumstances, Isaiah 8.20 gives us a standard of judgment. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them.